WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange is facing possible extradition to the U.S. on charges of conspiring to break into a Pentagon computer. Assange was arrested and hauled out of the Ecuadorian embassy in London this week. He's now vowing to fight any efforts to bring him to the United States, setting up what could be a lengthy legal battle over First Amendment rights. Let's bring in our legal panel now. Chris Stazak is here. He's a former senior investigative counsel for U.S. Congress and a former assistant attorney general. Jamil Jaffer also here, director of the National Security Law and Policy Program at George Mason University, also former chief counsel and senior advisor for the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Good to have both of you. Thanks, Rodell. Jamil, you're going to go first today. Should Assange be covered by protection of the First Amendment? Absolutely not. Julian Assange is hardly a journalist. He's definitely not a journalist. Nobody's really making that credible claim. Even if he were a journalist, journalists don't have a right uh, to conspire with somebody to hack passwords, hack computers, uh, break into secure systems, uh, and steal classified data. That's not something any legitimate journalist does. It's not something any legitimate journalist should do. And the idea somehow that indicting uh, Julian Assange for that very crime and only that crime is going to chill journalistic speech is ridiculous. What do you think, Chris? I completely agree, and I think another way to illustrate the point, Arthel, and I know you would never do this, but if you got together with Martha McCallum and Eric Sean and, and Anderson Cooper, and you guys decided after work today that you were going to go break into the federal building in downtown Manhattan to get some documents that you thought the American people should see, you're going to get arrested for that, and you should get arrested for that. In this case, Julian Assange had no business... Uh, he had no security clearance, no need to know, trying to tap into a U.S. government uh, computer and hack into that computer. He's been indicted by a grand jury. There's a legal process for that. There's a legal process for his extradition. But I don't see any implication of true First Amendment rights here. Mm -hmm. uh, Martha, Anderson, and Eric. We'd go out for drinks, though. <laughs> We'd, I would, any of them. All right. <laughs> All of them. Uh, Chris, let me stay with you. Jamil, I'll go back to you. Jamil, um, Chris, is saying that Julian Assange was not a passive participant in the, the Chelsea Manning case. Do you agree? According, I agree. That's, and that's what I, I've read the indictment, and I agree with that. He was not passive. He was actively, uh, I, in fact, I believe the indictment even has some exchanges between Chelsea Manning and uh, Julian Assange talking about their plan to try to do this. So he was not passive. Yeah. And Jamil, Assange, the charges for him, they did not mention Russia, because as that's part of the Mueller investigation. Still, how much political chaos did WikiLeaks infuse into the 2016 presidential race? Oh, I mean, WikiLeaks is right at the heart of the whole thing. I mean, if, if Assange is not directly a, a client of Russia's, uh, he certainly was a willing participant in the uh, in the overt and covert influence campaign that they leverage against our elections. And so, um, look, uh, Julian Assange is a, is, he's, I mean, his whole premise is leaking classified information, uh, but not in a way that creates some sort of important news or tells a story. It's simply for the period of interest. And uh, what he did here was he got Chelsea Manning to give him the hash value of a password. He went and tried to crack that password. He was literally, uh, as Chris says, was the guy making the skeleton key to break into a secure building, in this case, a computer system. That's just illegal. There's no journals would do that. And so this idea somehow that, that we got a First Amendment problem, it's just laughable. Mm. And Chris, you know, Assange's lawyer in London, he's fighting extradition to the U.S. I'm sure he has a team of lawyers. Um, but more charges are probably forthcoming. Prosecutors have 60 days to present a final case to British authorities. And the grand jury investigation, uh, Assange, uh, on him is still active. So do you think, Chris, that Assange will ever face prison time? I do. I think he's going to be extradited. I think, as you pointed out in an earlier segment, we, the United States has an extradition treaty with the United Kingdom. Right. And what, what he's accused of doing is a crime both in London, excuse me, in England and the United States. And, of course, his lawyers are going to fight that because that's what lawyers are paid to do for their client. But I think he is going to be extradited, and I, and I think he's going to be prosecuted, and I think he's going to be convicted. Uh, Jul uh, Jamil, do you think that Assange will ever flip, I mean, meaning implicate others in his crimes? And if he does, would his word be credible at that point? 
You know, it's a great question. It's hard to know. It depends on on who's above him in this in this chain um, and who the prosecutors might want to get. My guess is he's probably the primary target of this investigation. So my guess is they're going to want to put him in prison for a good long time. Now, if he has information about somebody above him, or people he was courting with, uh, or people he worked with uh, that are potential targets for the prosecution, there may be a deal in the offing. But right now, uh, as Chris says, the key part of this operation is to get him from England uh, to here to face charges here. That will happen. It may just take a good long time because, as Chris says, his lawyers got fight it as hard as they can uh, there in the UK as you'd expect them to do. Yeah, he's, Chris said they're fighting. They're going to fight as hard as they can. But Chris, you believe that ultimately Assange will be brought back here to the U.S., correct? No question. All right. Great short answer because I'm just looking at my clock here and I need to wrap. So good job, uh, Chris Stazak and uh, Mr. Jamil Jaffer. Thanks to both of you.